guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another podcast. This time I have Dana Sissons with me, Director of Communications at The Coalition. He took some time to, uh, well, meet me during his break, or he actually took a, a block out of his day to do this, and I messed up. I took some time because my audio was screwed up, but we are here, so uh, let's get into it. I'm going to unmute him and he can introduce himself, and then we'll get straight into the business. Go ahead. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, Dana, you guys know me. I mean, I'm, hopefully you know who I am. Not that I'm not that big of a deal, but I stream every week. So uh, happy to be here to to chat. Uh, these are great conversations to have. Um, I know, you know, we cover a lot uh, on the weekly streams that we do. Um, we did one of these before with, uh, with Chaps and Neon and a few people. And uh, uh, Dutch reached out and asked me if I wanted to join with him. Obviously, I was a little nervous. And then I, uh, and then um, was was happy to do that. You know, this becomes a little bit more interesting. It's more of a dialogue rather than a a, a torrent of communications that comes at me uh, in the stream, which is fine. But you know, it becomes a little tricky when to ask for a follow up question when somebody asks a question in the chat. So this is this is good. This is a little bit more of a uh, a little bit more of a, a conversation rather than question and answer period. So I'm excited. I agree. That's part of the reason I wanted to do these because on the internet, we can all disagree constantly, right? Because you interpret things the way you I want never, to interpret I, no one, I never get that. No, no. I I'm never sure. get any disagreement. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. So I wanted to ask you, I ask everybody this. Um, I take it you're a huge Gears fan. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. Like, you can't work on a title for three years and not become a fan of it. No, so. true. But also, right, everybody has their own favorite one. And my question to you would be, out of the ones that you've played or remember playing, what would be your so, favorite one? It's funny. So I played the trilogy um, back in the day um, uh, when it first came out. And uh, I was a big campaign fan. And I didn't, uh, the multiplayer never actually really kind of captivated me a ton mm -hmm. back in the day. Gear 2 campaign was the one that always stuck out in my head. And um, I don't know why. Uh, it just was the one that I just, I remember the most. And then, um, and that was always my favorite, my favorite one from a, from a campaign standpoint. And then uh, my son, he went and um, replayed all of the gears, you know, because I work on it. And <laughs> did uh, you make him do, or did he just want to? <laughs> no, no, he, he he wanted to. Okay, we got okay. Game Pass, so he was like, "I'm going to play the gears games," and I was like, "Okay." And first of all, it's hysterical that you can download an entire game in about like four seconds because of how small they are compared to yeah, like, the that's bigger true. games. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now. So, so he knocked out. So we he did you know one two three and then i told him don't bother with judgment and then <laughs> and then four and 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 fighting five. words fighting and words. <laughs> so i went through well the story didn't captivate him like he was had fun with it like he likes the um well no like him in a way that judgment would have like he didn't need to know more of the the sideness and all of this stuff where like that kind of a judgment way like he thought it was really neat he loves the car mines uh he was a big fan of jd then didn't like jd after he got scarred and everything like that so um but uh, so we played with him and then after playing it a second time actually gears 3 now i enjoy more than gears 2 but back in the day gears 2 was my favorite story and then I, I still like actually the campaign of Gears 2 from a gameplay, from just like the mechanics of it, mm -hmm. um, but an actual as a narrative bit. Um, uh, just, and I, when we went through, um, when we did the stream with Greg the other day, um, you know, just the emotional hits that you get in Gears 3, like that, that one is like, they, they just like, they pulled no punches. They were like, we just want to make you feel really sad yeah, <laughs> for big chunks of that game. And um, so I, I like the the story of Gears Three, but I actually the campaign of Gears Two is probably my favorite. Yeah, same. I mean, almost everyone. Kind of meandering answer. And yeah. It's... It's just... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, that's that's. Uh, I mean, everybody can have their own 
uh, personal uh, preference when it comes to that stuff. But many people like yourself, they say the Gears 2 campaign specifically is what they remember the best. So even the game as a whole, yeah. they might not like the most, but that campaign, it really, I don't know, I, maybe it's the pacing. I think it's everything about the campaign. Yeah. It's just one of the best games at that time. To... Well, it's funny. And I have a, a theory about game design. And I've talked to a bunch of designers about this. And, it's all, and, and it actually is like bands as well. Like... Your number, but with game design specifically, your second game is always, I feel like is always the one that is the one that you're going to really fly on. And the way it kind of works is you, you kind of, you go and you have this major big ideas you go through when you get, and, 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 and you make game number one. Mm -hmm. And then you go through and you chip away at it and you're kind of, it's a little rough and a little dirty. And there's a lot of stuff that gets cut out for scope and all of that kind of stuff. And then you get to the sequel and you've got a lot of those things that you wanted to do in the first game that you kind of didn't get. Things always get cut for scope, right? So those things are already cut. So you're kind of coming into the sequel with a good idea of who the characters are, what the story is. Plus you've already, under, and, you, and, and you don't have to kind of make the gameplay mechanics. You've kind of figured the gameplay mechanics, mechanics out. You've read some of the feedback, you've played the game. You're like, yeah, you know what? As much as we like that, we want to just make this little tweak here. We want to make that little tweak here. And then you've got all these other features that you had initially thought of that you couldn't fit in the first one. And you go down there. So I always feel like um, the second one in a lot of ways becomes that progression from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. Like you look at like to use a non-Gears 4 example, Mass Effect to Mass Effect 2. Mass mm -hmm. Effect 1 was a great game. Mass Effect 2 was like, holy fuck, this is yeah. really almost like, in my mind, like the penultimate like console RPG game. Like, And it probably wasn't surpassed until The Witcher 3. And that one came out. And I think, you know, CG Product Red is a good example of people that like are learning that. And I'm super stoked about um, Cyberpunk, uh, probably. Cyberpunk mm -hmm. coming up. Because yeah. Because they, they, you know, they're going to take all those learnings. Plus, those guys take forever to make games, which is great. And then it's lovely that they have those, re like that luxury of being able to do that, and and so on and so forth. So I do feel like that. And and I think even if you look at Gears Four to Gears Five, a campaign level, you know, a Gears Five campaign I think is far superior to the Gears Four campaign. And I think you go and you take that, uh, um, uh, um, uh. We learned a lot from Gears 4, and I wasn't around for the, for the creation of the Gears 4 campaign, so I can't speak too much to the process of it. Mm -hmm. But I, as a player, I know that when I played the Gears 4 campaign, it was fine. Um, you know, it was a walk in the woods. And then I played the Gears 5 campaign, and that one to me felt a lot more compelling. It felt a lot more like a Gears game. Mm -hmm. um, it felt more like, it, you know, there was a lot there. I still think it, like, the one thing that I love about Tactics bad guy and i it, you know if i have one criticism about gears five yes yeah, good thing and you gears four is we didn't have a bad we didn't we didn't have a bad guy yeah that was uh, I think that's, yeah, that was something very strange sorry to cut you off but that was during gears four you yeah. meet the speaker in the beginning you're like wow look at this guy and it turns out he's just another scion you know just a guy that speaks yeah and that was just like what and you kill him and you move on. And yeah, like you said, the, the main bad guy was missing. Gears 1 had that with Rom. Gears 2 had that with Scorch. Gears 3, obviously, Mira. Um, yeah, it, there was a big connection there. And Gears 5, same. I have the same uh, opinion of the campaign as you do. Uh, and coincidentally, I just finished it for the first time on Insane with two of my friends. It's insane, oh, yeah. you know. There are a lot of bugs that were hilarious that we didn't mind, right? And I know Gears as a game, especially on insane level, is very hard to balance properly because you have amounts of enemies, enemy spawns, types of enemies. You'll get a lot of those yeah. situations if you guys ever watch them. You'll see what I mean. Uh, they just turn into hilarious moments. But from game design, from just like you said, switching from setting to setting, big improvement from gears four gears four was a lot of yeah like you said walk in the parks you know you oh, okay yeah all right yeah and move on to the next thing while in gears five you really have yeah. those memorable it, moments i mean it's funny because i think of like gameplay moments mm -hmm. like if I, if I go through every gears game 
and I think of like gameplay moments from each game that stand out. Like I don't have a a lot of memories of big gameplay moments in Gears Three. I have a, I have a lot of memories of cinematic moments in Gears Three. I have a lot of memories of gameplay moments in Gears Two. Um, you know, when you're on the Derek, that one always stands out for me. When you're on the back of the, uh, I forget what it's called, and you're fighting the Reavers as they're flying at you. Um, the Reavers? You know, a, a lot of that stands out. Uh, yeah, well, the Reavers, no, but I forget what you're on the back of. You're on the back of something, and you have the Reavers coming at you. Are you on the back of a Reaver? Yeah, you're on the back of a Reaver, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. For, so, yeah, yeah. So I, remember, so, I remember, so I remember those moments, and then, you know, Gears 1, uh, obviously, for me, the thing that stands out the most shake and be the <laughs> and the um and 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 the and the the rom fight at the end and then whereas in gears four you know i don't have a lot of you know there it's kind of there yeah and then with um with gears five you know a, a lot of the, the the you know the great fights in vascar really stick out for me um as as as, as some of the ones that i really um uh, that like I remember, and 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 I, and I recognize there's a recency effect with Gears Five that it's a little bit easier to remember all the minutia. Um, but for me, you know, I really like Gears Five. Welcome to the Legion. Like you were saying, from a design standpoint, because I do think there were a lot of really good moments inside of that that were that were really quite compelling. I agree, I agree, and that's something I think a lot of us, uh, the hardcore Gears fans is that's what we strive for i suppose as a community is like we want to repeat that that's what we want back and of course tc as a company and as a different studio they also want to make their own thing and that stuff clashes a lot that's mm. one of the biggest things whether it's campaign multiplayer horde or co-op i could say is something that constantly comes back but i wanted to keep this session more yeah, about you as well. sorry yeah no no it's fine it's fine um i wanted to keep more keep it a bit more about yourself as well because you mentioned that mm -hmm. you didn't work on uh gears 4 right you weren't around at tc at that point yeah i came in and i came in um i joined the coalition in august 2017 mm -hmm. um so you know gears 4 at that point had been out a year know, under or so. a year yeah you know it, it it, yeah, it had, you know, it had certainly, um, uh, you know, I joined more in the live services part of the game rather than the, uh, a lot of the the big issues that were around at the beginning, you know. Yeah, you were just Cuny weren't so part so of, forth, yeah. Were, were, were largely resolved by the time I joined, um, so. So my question to that is, did you apply to, like, did you see that Gears had a position, you were like, I want to work on Gears, or... Is it something you were asked to do, or how how'd that go? So I I worked. So I've I've been in and out of the game industry for a long, long time because I'm old as fuck. And you know I worked at EA for a long time. And well, no, I mean to give you an idea of how old I am, I actually helped launch Xbox Live like way, way back in the Oof. day. <laughs> I mean, half my chat um, weren't, wasn't even alive so, back then, so. No, yeah. So, like, I mean, it, for me, like, that was. I remember being on like national TV in Canada at like four in the morning, debuting on the like the equivalent <laughs> of like what's That's like crazy. Good morning in America and Canada. And uh, so I went. And so we were kind of, and it was unheard of at the time because the idea that you were playing with people and talking to them and all of this sort of stuff was just blowing people's brains yeah. at that point. Um, so, so I've been in, in and out of games forever, and then um, I worked at EA for a long, long time, and I had a kind of a, um, I, I was pretty exhausted by the time that it was all said and done at EA, and they shut my studio down, so they did mass layoffs, so I was a little kind of disgruntled mm. about games, not with EA, uh, EA, uh, I, I get why they did what they did, and they were really generous with how they shut the studio down and everything like that, and um, I was kind of like, I didn't know if I wanted to get back into games again. And then um, Alex Grimley, who um, is, was on the stream previously, he oversees sort of the live services of, uh, of Gears 5 now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, him and I worked together way, way back in the day, and I reached out to him. And I asked him a bunch of questions really about studio culture and about what's going on. Because, um, you know, I, there were certain things that I didn't want to kind of get back into. Uh, from that process and with him 
he, he really kind of um, I, I really respect Alex a lot and he gave me a lot of good indications on um, uh, on what on what things were like mm. and so he put in a good word and then I chatted with Rod and you know various other people inside the studio and um, you know and then it was there I mean and so there was that part of it like for me studio culture workplace culture is really really important um, and then you know the gears IP was great uh, you know it's it's rare that you get to work on a globally known IP. You know, I would argue that Gears, in terms of just name recognition, is probably oh, a yeah. top ten in the world. Oh yeah. There are people that don't play games, but still know that still know Gears of War, and um, and I think for me, you know, to be able to do that in Vancouver, uh, I mean, Vancouver is very lucky. If you look at whether it's FIFA or whether it's um, you know, Gears or even a few lesser IPs. We've got some like major, major IPs that are built in Vancouver. So the fact that I was able to go and work on a AAA game in a good studio with a good uh, aspect um, uh, for me was was an important part of why I wanted to join the coalition. And did you do you live in Vancouver or in the area there or? Oh wow, yeah, yeah that's really know, I mean, coincidental. I mean, right like, I, I didn't I didn't move to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, we're pretty settled here. You know, we own a house, which in Vancouver is we were very lucky that we got in. <laughs> it's um, and, and and you know, my, I, I've got like like a family here, like my wife and my kids, and we didn't um, didn't really want to disrupt kind of a lot of what what was going on in, in with all of that. And so this was just a really good opportunity for us. Yeah, I mean, why not, right? Like, you, first of all, everyone needs a job, yeah. and if you fit there, then why not right uh, yeah. that's uh i mean there, there was that part of it yeah i mean i was actually yeah i was trying to start my own business for a long time and i said i was going to take six months to see if i could make it work and when <laughs> right. the six months was getting up <laughs> um the financing had fallen through a few times i and then this one came up and it really worked out in a scenario where um uh i was able to you know go back and work on something that i love like i love video games like it's something that i personally really, really relevant and meaningful to me mm -hmm. and in a huge part of my life and being able to work in games and being able to work at a studio like the coalition and be able to work on a franchise like Gears of War. Like really there was a lot of amazing synergies for that at the time. So well, that's good. So a question about, I guess, working at TC, maybe from your perspective or um, just in the studio itself, what is like an average work week look like for you? How many, hours would you sort of make is there a lot of crunch like they say it is you know what what is normal I mean, crunch i suppose but yeah crunch is different so the way a studio operates right you've got the technical people inside the studio you've got people that are you know engineers and artists and uh the qa folk and our like our online services team and producers and you know a whole gamut of, of like the vfx people all of that and you know when you're making a game you've got a deadline of the game is coming out on november the right let's just use the, the scarlet launch as or the <laughs> xbox series x launch as an example nothing uh, confirmed <laughs> well, it's, it's fine i mean it, it's still, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's well no i mean it's coming out on november the 10th it's established, but it's funny that like for me like it's we've been calling it scarlet for so long that i actually really struggle to carl with it yeah it's actual name yeah, yeah so um um so uh back in anyways going way back uh the um uh so all of those people are are, are around with that and then you've got people who are kind of tertiary to the game development experience. So we've got like my team, we've got our media services team, we've got our esports team, mm -hmm. we've got our like our BI, which is like our business intelligence team. They're the people that go and take all the data um, of how people play and what people do and crunch that. So we look at it and go like, hey, lots of people like this, we should do more of that. Or people aren't doing this. Like really it's, it's helpful because we've like, like every game or every tech company, there's just tons and tons of information that is given to us by what people do. And, you know, it, it, to have someone go and be able to understand and interpret that data, then that sets up the designers to then go and, and, and take that data and then go and make 
um, um, decisions designs based yeah. on what that information is inside of that. So for me, my average week is, you know, I work, uh, you know, I probably work like 50 to 60 hours a week um, because, you know, we still haven't found a replacement for Octus yet. So a lot of, for me, um, I'm sort of doing the day-to-day -day stuff as well as the planning stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of writing. I go to a lot of meetings. Um, you know, I got to like manage my team um, to make sure that they're prepared, that they're satisfied. Um, I'm working in the moment on like, what are we doing next week or what are we doing the following week for, you know, what events do we want to be doing or what are like this kind of stuff? Yeah. Or, like, is this the right thing that should be going into the store? Is this going to make people happy? Is this going to make people sad? Um, to like, oh, well, here's a character design that we're working on that's coming X farther designs out or here's a map and then feeding back into that going, hey, the community is going to like this or the community is not going to like that. We should be doing this or we should be doing that. Um, having conversations with like, I have regular conversations with like, our services team around matchmaking to make sure that that experience continues to be iterated and refined on. Uh, regular regular conversations with our designers around, hey, is Ranked doing what we want Ranked to be doing? And then kind of, and then I, and then I'm, uh, you know, I have to draft everything, right? Pretty much all the content um, for like the what's up and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then, and you know, it just, there's a lot, it's just a variety of things. So it's not really crunch, it's just, and then I find working from home, and I don't know if you're the same, uh, but it's easy to work longer hours just because you're home. Yeah. So, no, you know, you no walk like my computer's just always there yeah. and you kind of walk by and I'm like, oh, well, I can knock this out or whatever yeah. it is. So, you know, I that is, that is kind true. of get this sort of balance from that standpoint. That is true. I, I'm, I, me personally, I'm more the sort of person that likes to keep my work and, and private completely separated just because that's what I like to do. You know, like to go to work, do my stuff there and go home and do whatever I do at home. Uh, but I completely understand as in your job with management and everything else, being able to actually do that from home <clears throat> and not have to go to the studio. There's no rushing back and forth. There's no traffic. There's no none of that. Right. You can you can in theory and, then, and I'm also everything. reachable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'm reachable, right? So the other part of it is like, if I'm sitting there like on a Saturday morning and I'm like, um, you know, I, I don't really, I don't really sleep very much. So I wake up at like seven and I'm just sitting there and I'm on my phone. And if there's a bunch of tweets and I've got nothing else to do, then like, you'll see it usually, like I end up either Saturdays and Sunday mornings. It's kind of, I'll, I'll be active on Twitter for like an hour where I'm answering questions or I'm doing this yeah. and that kind of stuff. And, um, and, and that's the other part. So if something, and, and I also just have to be present because something is going wrong or something is not working. You know, we have in-game telemetry to tell people that, but it's also important for me to send an email going, hey guys, we're seeing reports of this. Is this a widespread issue? Is this not a widespread issue? Mm. Or, you know, not that that happens that often anymore, but it's still just kind of having to be cognizant and present and aware. So. Completely agree. I mean, that, I mean, in your position as a director of communications, that is literally your job, right? <laughs> the direct communications. Yeah. So whatever it is, that's but what it's you have hard to do. because, like, yeah, you want to shut off, and like that's for me, that's the hardest part. And this isn't like a weird, like low key flex, but you know, there is an expectation that we should be reachable and accessible and having those conversations. Yeah. And it is a little tricky to make sure that we're not you know and i'm very like deliberate with my team of being like hey i want you guys to have a work-life balance i don't expect you to be working a lot and all of that and i have that conversation all with them and i you know kind of force myself to think that way as well um you know like taking time off and if i'm not working then i'm not working and, and i mean if you wanted to be an entrepreneur you know as well as i do there's, there's just no breaks really you know you always have to do something so that makes you <laughs> yeah. the prime candidate to do that sort of work. Um, I, I'll admit that even though the decisions TC makes um, and sometimes things I'll see you say or put or whatever, I definitely respect respect work, work ethic. Jeez, I can't even speak anymore. I've been talking all day. Um, that no matter what someone yeah. does, this is the same thing with Jack Felling that was a TC for the esports program. She gave the impression that she worked around the clock which I assume she did because there were a lot of things happening. And this was before your time, yeah. uh, I think, when she was really constantly Yeah, we active. only overlapped by a couple of... 
and yeah, we only overlap by a couple of months. Yeah, so but that was something yeah, I mean, you really hard, right. But like you, you can burn yourself out. Like you have to balance it. That that too, but it, it just it shows the commitment someone's willing to make despite you disagreeing with maybe what that person's doing. And I can recognize that you know that with you the way you're talking about this. You're, you're a family man. You also have your your kids and your your uh, your partner to care for. Uh, some people don't have that. If you don't have that, then there's no you know that balance <laughs> you don't have to take any uh you don't have to sacrifice that stuff because it's not there and i think a lot of people in our community they like to forget that they like to forget that on the other side of things is a person with an actual life next to that and now i mean this year with the whole coronavirus all the measures in every country somehow you have to make things work and for a gaming studio i would i would assume this is absolute hell to to suddenly go through all this and um still manage to pump out at a decent rate you know the content that you guys are putting out even if we might not like it as a community it, the fact that it still gets done is uh is commendable <laughs> i mean that that's the truth i have to say with my company the the, the place i work at yeah. it, it there's a lot of things that they do right now that i disagree with but I know that they're working around the clock. I can see that happening, you know? So you have to give people time. So that's more lesson to the people at home. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. Like it, it, it is, I mean, I think having been around a lot of various gaming communities and fan communities, um, you know, I was talking about on yesterday's stream, I'm a huge, huge Star Wars fan. And, you know, when there comes and and I, I read an article or an interview with, I, I think it was like Brie Larson or something when she became Captain Marvel mm. and she was talking about how it's, you know, you have all these people that come and have such passion around an idea uh, and, and they feel, you know, like using an IP like Gears, you know, a lot of people probably started playing Gears when they were, you know, in their early teens uh, and have sort of grown up with that franchise. You know it meant a lot to them so you feel like a level of ownership towards it and you know a, it, for me as much as it can get um potentially toxic at times a lot of a lot of what you do see or what you feel is you know people are passionate they they feel a level of ownership isn't the right word but i'm trying to think of a better version of word of that yeah, they, i guess they, contribution they feel, state, I think. They feel in, invested yeah yeah they feel invested inside of it like i've i've done this and i've played that and i've been part of this mm -hmm. and you know and 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 that passion sometimes comes out a little strongly <laughs> but i mean it, it a lot of it is <laughs> but a lot of it is for good right it, it becomes one of those ones uh where they they care about it and things resonate with different people right it's like how people like my son played gears enjoyed it but you know it didn't like from a narrative standpoint he wasn't like when dom died i was like oh my god he was like meh like it, yeah. like it didn't like it didn't you know he was just moving through he had fun playing the games but he didn't he didn't tap into the character but he plays halo and he absolutely loves halo for him like the halo storyline is important to him like he just he like every day he's like, what's going on with infinite? And he asks me all these questions and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, of course. And it's just, you don't know why, like why Dana, thing, Dana why works at Microsoft basically, person. right? So he's, his son can say, oh, yeah, oh my dad works they, at Microsoft. Yeah, they told me all the time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad, yeah, get this guy banned, like, he's talking shit. This is an idea. Yeah, this is an idea we've got for infinite. Can you just, what do you think? And I'm like, dude, I don't know. Anyway, so. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, I mean, I can speak for myself I mean, everybody in the chat probably feels the same way is that, yeah, we do in, in fact feel that way. And I think a lot of us, including myself, I mean, I've kind of let that go now after all these months and years, but felt like a lot of the things that were happening around gears felt like a just massive, ma massive wrong turn of what made us love the game and thus uh, me and other people thinking will make other people love the game again. But there's obviously a huge crowd out there that we never see because we're so closed off in the Gears world. But we think, oh, it has to be like this game or, you know, Gears 1 and it has to be Gears 3 and it never ends. 
And there are people I mean, that, sh people shat the, on I, I, on Gears Judgment, but don't realize that a bunch of the guns in Gears Judgment, if they weren't made in that game, they wouldn't be in Gears Five. So if they like them in Gears Five, they need to work like a bit of Gears Judgment. I mean, they just don't look at that connection the same. One of our most popular modes, free for all, came from Judgment. judgment yeah, right? like there was a lot of things inside of a lot of things inside of Judgment that like. And the the thing that like, and I feel for the people at Halo, and and I don't have any intel at all, but I like just being as a fan, and I look at kind of what the gears is like when you're into a um, uh, an IP the way that like you are, like we are with gears or with with um, uh, you know with 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 Halo or any other long-standing IP, you kind of get into that scenario of. Um, people have their stake on like i enjoy more than um than uh that version mm. so like gears 2 like like we put it out here like if we were to go right now and say we're gonna go and chase down the path of make this game exactly like gears 2 just picking randomly um there are a bunch of people that are gears 1 fans or gears 3 fans or gears 4 fans um or gears 5 fans that are going to be like you, you have alienated me. You have moved <laughs> right. away from what I like about Gears. That is, and that's a really, really hard part is how do you balance that idea of what kind of keeps the spirit of a game hmm. without kind of moving? Because especially with Gears, and, and I've talked about this a bunch, like whether it was done by Epic or us or People Can Fly, um, mechanics of each game are very other than being a cover based shooter with some wall sliding and stuff like that they're all very different oh, yeah. the movement mechanics are very different. the weapon mechanics are very different you know like like people talk about like the op lancer in gears 5 play gears 3 like i if gears 3 would have come out today with the way that gamers play games now i think it's a different oh 100 environment with 60 Anything like that, Gears Three would have been a Lancer Fest way more than Gears Five is. Oh yeah, yeah. Just I mean, by virtue of how powerful those people, yeah. I mean, these days people play uh, to to just win all the time, uh, no matter if it's just for fun yeah. or whatever. That's what they do. People did that in the past also, but there was, and I talk about this all the time. When the retro and Sonoff were introduced. Even the people that wanted to win didn't use them because they saw them as the noob gun, right? That was meant for the people who didn't know how to play. That's no longer really around. People will just use whatever they can to just win and just win alone. And that's good enough. And that's what they get their enjoyment out of. It's th that culture. And that could be my perspective because it's yeah. what I get to see when I play or watch other people. Um, but there isn't really that... Yeah. Yeah, it was a clear divide between people. And people say Gears 4 divided yeah. the player base. But after a while, I started seeing that people were already divided. They divided themselves. And Gears 4 just showed that with the two tunings. But what I wanted to touch on real quick. Go ahead. Go, oh, yeah. Go ahead. For sure. You were mentioning about The Witcher, right? You're a big fan of how they've done things. and Or I would say mm -hmm. CG Project Red, right? With uh, yeah, yeah. Cyberpunk coming out. Um, one thing that was mind blowing to me was when obviously they released Witcher 3, which was a massive success for them and the gaming industry as a whole really at that point, because it really just showed an incredible game. Um, then they released the show, right? The Witcher series, right? On Netflix. Was it Netflix? I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Pay me. <laughs> yeah, it was Netflix. Yeah. Um, and it turns out they sold more copies of Witcher 3 after that series was launched than when the game first came yeah. out. And that to me showed that if you, and the hope obviously rises when, you know, you look at it in gears the same way. If you truly invest mm. in just the core group of fans, of course, takes a lot of risk because not every game company yeah. can do that. That's huge, right? It's a very brutal business. Um, but yeah. if you get it that way, man, like you have a group for I life, know, it I seems. Mean, it's, it, it's funny. Like The Witcher is an interesting, it, interesting analogy because it's a couple of things, right? Like The Witcher, the TV show is not based on the game. It's based on the novel. Mm -hmm. 
so they went and kind of they adopted it more uh, like the Game of Thrones, Song of Fire and Ice mm -hmm. uh, aspect. And the games were just a great interpretation of those novels as well. And I think people enjoyed the novels and were like, oh, I'm going to go and play this game where I heard it. And it, it helped that The Witcher was Witcher 3 was an amazing game. So you had and so there's that part. Um, and I think The Witcher well, was a great show with a very catchy tune. And um, and I think the one thing it showed that is so hard is good making a good show based on a video game is really really hard i don't i can't think of a movie that has been based on a video game that has broken through the way like the marvel movies have with superheroes with comic books right right like for a long time they made comic book movies that never that never really worked yeah and you know like and like look at like there was a couple of halo shows that are fine, um, but they didn't really. And I know Halo is working on a, a, a um, another TV show, mm -hmm. but like you know, like there's a couple of things inside of um, all of that that's tricky. And I know you know for us, and I don't know if you're asking about extended IP or whatever it is. I mean, I worked on Need for Speed for, for a long time, and Need for Speed at one point was literally the biggest game in the world. It, when Most Wanted came out, it was huge. Oh, it was time insane game. Did you work on that game? Curious. I did not. I joined just when um, I joined for Pro Street. So I joined this kind of the point. end of this like Black point. Box making great games, but Criterion making amazing games. Yeah. I'm super excited that Opera Suit is coming out. Uh, that game is phenomenal. It's one of the, the games I'm most proud to mm -hmm. have ever worked on. It's probably Hot Pursuit, the skate games, Gears 5. So that kind of stuff. So, um, but that game like was like lightning in a bottle. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and it, it, and it was just one of those things that sometimes, like, how do you get that? And, you know, you look at, like, the volume of games that come out now, and a lot of it's like Gears, you know, Halo being that killer game for the Xbox, and then Gears being that killer game on the 360. And are you just the right game at the right time and the right all those yeah. things? And, like, there are lots of times when you have a really good game that just doesn't... It, it does well, mm -hmm. but to become like a, a cultural icon is hard. And, and a lot of it is luck. Like you kind of can't, like you can't, um, you can, you can try to align things the best you can. Um, but sometimes it's just, you know, like would Need for Speed been as popular as it would have been had Fast and the Furious not come out and been as successful at the same time? You know, yeah, that's like, a good point. Like, 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 you know, like all these weird things. Like, I remember talking with the head of marketing, and the fact that like Brooke Burke, who was in Underground, Need for Speed Underground, and then Brooke Burke had was a huge star, ended up having like a Playboy spread. And he's like, her being in Playboy actually impacted yeah. how many people playing the game. Like all of these weird things that you can't account for become big. That was back when yeah, Playboy think was. If you, yeah, I mean, I was a lot younger then. I was like 15, 16, sort of like that. But when I look at Gears, the game I see now, anyway, I'm 28 now, but the game I see and the game mm -hmm. I try to compare to when I was 15, 16, when I skipped school to get Gears 2, um, was that I didn't need, uh, you know, a celebrity. I didn't need any of that. I saw Gears as like, this was such a yeah. unique game in terms of not only the gore the campaign like it, it, when i look at it objectively i look at it as as it like the the cheesy b movie macho game that's what i see the 80s commando rambo predator yeah. type of tin man big muscles walking around doing really dumb really dumb things really like that's what they're doing. That's what the story is about when you play it. It's just walking around oh, killing these it creatures. It was machismo. It was yeah. literally like Arnold Schwarzenegger saying, I know that I could run into this building and destroy these 50 people and not worry about it. Yeah. And that was Marcus. That was that was Delta Squad. It was kind of like that was there. And yeah. I, I think, this is me, I think there's a huge uh, want out there. And I asked the same in one of my videos uh, about a week ago or so, or a couple of days ago now, uh, where I said, and this is what, of course, a small tiny percent of the people would say uh is i would be as a fan willing to pay more as a sort of subscription a month for the game that we want so sort mm. of instead of what 
obviously the witcher is the cd project red where they just release the dlc and sell massive amounts of numbers on steam and the rest of it yeah. is to pay the coalition or microsoft or whoever right to continuously make the game that we want them to make which is more a fundraising sort of aspect i guess but there are a lot of people i think if you would give them the a couple choices on the table and say would mm -hmm. you like to go down the road we're going now and continue down this road yes or no or would you go down this road and risk that right the people in my opinion the community would definitely rise for that because I've, I've seen it I, i've seen people spent literally thousands of dollars on things to keep things going oh yeah that might not if you look at it i guess uh financially wouldn't even be worth it but they love it so much they'll keep going and going and going i mean the other day uh what's her name uh uh candace marie i think right with her entire yeah. collection i mean just look at it like it's a, it's a gold mine of stuff of gears of war you know you won't find many people like that anymore and in order to yeah keep the series going i think because i look i can only see a few numbers but the numbers that i do see i look and go the majority of people that i want to convince to get into gears they will look at those numbers and say that's not even worth my time you know and that's really hard yeah. to convince them just to play the game it 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 depends on how you look at it though dutch because if you look at it from so i I'm, i can't speak to the specifics mm -hmm. but you know i can say that millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people have played gears yeah and a lot of those people like like let's uh, let's use me as an example i played gears one two and three when they came out i played the campaign i tried the the multiplayer it didn't really captivate me i was a huge battlefield fan at the time mm -hmm. and that was all i wanted to play bad company 2 is one of my top games ever and from a versus standpoint and um, that was what I wanted to play. And, you know, there are a lot of people that have played the campaign, loved the campaign for, you know, Gears 5, went in there, they picked up the multiplayer, and for whatever reason, the multiplayer didn't resonate yeah. with them. Whether it was too hard, whether it was, um, you know, just they didn't like the style. Like, who knows why? There's lots of people that it did resonate with. So I'm focusing on more your specific, like, this isn't me saying it didn't work for lots of people. This is me just giving you the example of that for the people that it didn't like appeal to that were, let's call them campaign players. Yeah. Um, uh, um, like there, so I can go and I can enjoy, you know, le like the, the, like I'll use, use me, me as another example. Like, you know how much I love Star Wars. Um, I picked up squad, like squadrons. I, I don't have like the idea of a dog fighting multiplayer game doesn't appeal to me. As a, as a as a gamer right. so as much as i love star wars i'm like eh, you know what if i get it i get it if i play it maybe i'll like it but it's not like one i have to get just because i love star wars and i think there are lots of people that are campaign driven players yeah um regardless of not just gears but just in general oh, yeah. that they go and they're and and i think and maybe those are and, and i think shooters are very personal when it comes to multiplayer um, I personally don't enjoy the time to kill in a Call of Duty game. That's why I don't play it. Um, you know, I like something that's a little less twitchy, a little less like meat grinder. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I actually prefer the Battlefield games over the Call of Duty games. I like Gears because of the lower time to kill. Even like, even, um, you know, uh, from a Battle Royale game, that's why I like Apex. Like Apex, the time to kill, although this op operation, they bumped it up. But still, uh, or this season, or whatever they fuck they call their stuff. But you know what I mean, like so, like there's in that. So I think, or like this campaign game appealed to a lot of people, and maybe that's just because it went back to its roots a little bit more compared to Gears Four. Uh, you know, tactics as a campaign game appealed to a lot of people. It's, I it's saw in really, tactics really hard. I saw in tactics what I missed in Gears Four and Five which is the sort of yeah um yeah the grittiness the the, the, the it yeah. has the 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 dad humor in kind of incorporated when everything falls apart they kind of still joke about it that doesn't really fit that yeah. well in gears 5 because well everyone is still sort of young 
and it doesn't really feel like in the older gears games you felt like this is a war where everyone is dying just everyone's dead pretty much so there's really nothing to look forward to so when there's some humor like cole or barrett with his sarcasm mm -hmm. it really strikes you know yeah. and with gears 5 and yeah. 4 a lot of the times to yeah. me and to some people your age from the stone age back then you know they they come at their holes they go <laughs> you know they they'll start yeah. they'll they'll get it again but it that's that's what i missed from uh from four and five yeah, and i i, I actually I, I was so um tyler bielman who is the uh um, the creative director for for gears tactics uh he and i had a, a big chat about about this specifically and how we thought I, I just you know giving him my opinion this wasn't this was me as dana the person the gamer not dana as voice of the community mm -hmm. and i just said to him i was like i really I, I like what you did with tactics and i was like it felt and he was like it was a conscious effort of they want because of when it was set of where it was set they you know the throwback made a lot of sense mm -hmm. um you know where their learnings that can be applied going forward you know i'm i i can't even begin to speak to that um but I, I do feel, I, 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 I don't disagree with what you're saying, that for people that are fans of the original trilogy, I do think Tactics, um, if you haven't played it because you're, you know, you're a console gamer, you should be excited about it coming out, you know, in, in like almost exactly a month, like a month tomorrow. Um, Quick just plug. by virtue of... <laughs> Well, hey man, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's fine. That's it's what fine. I'm here for. It's and it. um, uh, uh, but no, but like, like, re like, realistically speaking, if you are a fan of Gears story from Gears one, two, and three, you will go and you will find Yukon, uh, Ukon, interesting. You will find Gabe and Sid and Michaela compelling as characters. You're gonna go. You may not like the gameplay because you know it's a turn-based tactics shooter, mm -hmm. or you, but. It's got those gears moments. It feels big. It feels over the top. It, it's got some of that gallows humor. It's a, a lot of that stuff is is inside of, of tactics. And I I, I, I I really, really like tactics a lot. Yeah. Like I, I think it's- But I even think for the so. gameplay, I mean, obviously it's a completely different game. Like you said, it's turn-based tactics stuff, uh, but the mechanics of um, leveling your character up, uh, that's something I really miss in the, in the co-op side of uh, horde and escape now that's not to say that it's bad the way it's set up per se but i think the 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 co-op side of of gears i could be completely wrong is more interested in that long min max grind over a long period of time with different builds that they can make for characters uh than yeah. the way this card set up because i played gears 4 horde that was just a massive speed run fest in all practicality that's yeah. what people did you guys tried to count it out in gears 5 sort of worked i think uh, don't i don't really play the master level of horde like many people do i just can't find it. better players <laughs> my, my friends gonna hate me but um it, it's just finding the time leveling up the cards you know it, it is a it is a sink you have to t put a lot of time into that and yeah i mean oh sorry go ahead uh, and another thing that kind of what I notice now is that you find a build and you just stick to that build because that's the only build that really is viable at a certain level. And that bores very quickly for a lot of people who are, you know, grinders that, that play in and out. They just, once you max out, that's it. But with a skill build, you can kind of, and that's really hard to balance just to, you know, tell everybody that, that I'm not expecting anything. But when you look at places like uh, uh, Division isn't one, yeah, tactics would be a good example. You know, have four different trees that you can go into. That you have different sets of engineers, you know, that really have to rely on one another instead of just one big bossy guy who just, I'm going to put this down and everything's dead. Because that's what it sort of turns into, you know, and that's probably unexpected, but... Yeah, yeah, I think it's an interesting thing. I mean, I, I do... Mind design is, is is complex, right? Mm -hmm. Because there are two types of there. There are lots of types of players. There are the people that want to put hundreds of a thousand, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours into a game, and they want to sort of feel that grind, take them and satisfy them over that entire duration. Mm -hmm. There's other players that like I'm going to invest 10, 15, 20 hours in a game, and I want to feel like I've completed something. 
and you know to design to satisfy one you're going to in, 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 invariably alienate the other so that's you know always an example cut um, off real quick because i just remembered yep. a good example would be like diablo does it with that you can build your yep. skill tree but as you level you get paragon levels and just slightly get a little bit stronger every time and get a little bit more HP or damage just to keep you going and really make you into that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Diablo has the luxury of being able to have scaled loot as well. Yeah, yeah of is, course. Which kind of adds a nuance to it. Um, which Tactics does a little bit with the, with the weapon mods. Exactly. So kind of, in some ways, Tactics is actually more like a Diablo type game. Um, not from a gameplay standpoint, but uh, and not it's not like a loot grinder the way Diablo is. Mm. But in terms of you can go and you've got your character and your weapons, which you use to buff your character and that kind of such. Um, but so for us, and I think the one thing that I know that Michael Shannon, who is amazing, um, you know wh when he took over the duties for for PVE, um, uh, you know he's been really good at, at at buffing and nerfing and at characters to kind of keep that dynamic you were talking about there was a lot that was intended that unfortunately didn't get into a the most not the patch that's coming out but the most recent patch pre previous to that that while we did announce it they were basically it, it, it they, they kind of didn't get through cert at the very last second due to a bunch of localization issues and um, they're not going to be in this op they're not going to be in this title update coming on monday but they will be there at the beginning of op 5 and I think you're going to see stuff like that, where he recognizes that, you know, you know how JD was overpowered, and then they kind of we nerfed him, mm. and then you know you're going to go, and then that that Marcus is really powerful right now, and you're going to see some tweaks to that, I believe, and a few things. So, uh, yes, I agree with what you're saying, and I think Michael wouldn't disagree either. And it's one of those ones that it's a lot like more like you think at hero based games. Uh, like Apex, as an example, you know, where you're going to go and you have, they look at it and they go, oh, too many people are playing Pathfinder. Yeah. So yeah. we need to go in, a, 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 we need to tweak this. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of what Michael Shannon does is they look at it. Now we have a lot more levers to pull with our skill cards and the progression ratios and how do you nerf it and stuff like It's not just a simple of like one little lever you can pull. Mm -hmm. There's lots and lots of levers you can pull, um, whether it's the bleed effect or, or whatever it is. So you know, being a hero-based PVE mode now, in, in, in a lot of ways, um, it, it frees us up to make those adjustments, but you know, you have to do that. I and, recognize and, and that too on. from Ryan, when he used to talk about balancing guns, a large portion of that had to do, at least from what I remember him talking about and admitting, was that when some, when us as a community used certain weapons too much, right? That TC yeah. or him, or the group, whatever, wanted us to use more balanced, uh, you know, guns, I guess, or different weapons. That's why weapon swaps were changed, etc. cetera. Um, which of course it can have an effect with a large portion. Didn't have that much effect for me. Um, I know you gotta go soon. Yeah, I mean, the overkill was a perfect example. Oh yeah, the overkill was, I, I can just talk to that. The overkill was a good example. No one was using it. So they kept buffing it and buffing it and buffing it. I was. So now <laughs> it is so, it's so it's so stupidly overpowered. Like when we do our play tests and Jim Bob gets the overkill, like he just runs yeah. around and it's just a, it's a it's it, I don't know why everyone doesn't use the overkill. It is it's unstoppable. Insane. Yeah, because it's four. basically a Nasher with just a bit longer of a range. A bit longer. <laughs> so. I mean, it's basically like Gears of War two title update six for all the old heads out there. I mean, it's insane. It's insane, but it's also funny because people will rage at you and they won't understand why. It's an overkill, it's crap, but no, no, it's really strong. Um, yeah. Closing, yeah, well, closing part, right? so, statement yeah. or request would be from the whole community is to... Um, now, this is mostly mine. That's like 80% me, 20% community. Is to, <laughs> is to really try to take the risk. I mean, I, I know it's Microsoft. I know it's a lot of it is corporate. I know that. Um, yeah. yeah, try to take risk because the people that continuously play Gears and want to keep playing Gears are the people that are willing to take that risk and say, I'm going to play this game for the next five to 10 years if I want to. We still have people on Gears 1, the, the original one. You know, they 
are still yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, was like, what are you doing? But anyway, that's what they want to do. If you give those people... It's not that that was a bad game. It's just there's been so many other really good... Why are they just Gears games? There's been so yeah, many but... other good games that have come out since then. Let's not even bother. Some of those people have never seen a mouse, you know? It's just... They only know controller and that's it. They don't even have a joystick anymore. They just kind of put their thumb in the controller and move it around. But yeah. we have a community that's probably thousands of people large that are just dormant. They want that that gears game that we that we grew up playing and i'm i mean i see people 10 people years are, younger than oh, me so. that say the same thing and of course i'm talking about yeah. five people the only people in europe left playing but this is like their, their commitment is so large they could probably just by convincing you know be become a promoter because me personally all the years doing all this and looking at the things and playing and stuff there's a lot of times you become a detractor, you know, I become the guy that says, you know, you want to get on Gears? Someone says, oh, I don't really play Gears. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'll come play your game, right? Like, never mind. Well, before I was like, nah, man, you know, come on, get the game pass and get on with me. And that just, yeah, it, it it's hard. It's hard because even those people, the people that I didn't play Gears with in the, back in the day are saying the same things, are saying... I want to play the old stuff, but then in the new world, you know, Gears of War 2 uh, remaster is something people keep dropping. Even the ones that hated Gears 2 are like, yes, Gears 2 remaster. But I get it. Like you said, campaign is a huge deal. Co-op is a huge deal. Everybody knows this. I mean, you can just look at the achievement list and you'll see how many people last on versus. I completely understand that. But I think if we went back to it, like with tactics, I think tactics was really popular. Is still really popular, mm -hmm. I believe so. Like, yeah, it that... was. It, it was. Um, we were really, really pleased with how well. I mean, considering it was a like a PC oriented game, you know, it was a very appealed to a very specific audience. Mm -hmm. And you know, from a Gears fan standpoint, you know, it's if you're if if you're a, a Gears fan from a versus, or even like you know from a gameplay standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, whether you play you know PVE or PVP, um, you know, tactics is certainly not intuitively in your wheelhouse and gears being known as a console game you know all of those things despite all that gears you know gears tactics was you know we were very happy with the success of it yeah. and are very optimistic about what's going to be going on in um you know once the game comes out on console yeah i i hope but it kicks off yeah I, I i mean some of what you're saying i understand and some of it is like it's selfish <laughs> Yourself. No, no, but I mean, it's good. Feed, it's good feedback, but it's 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 kind of um, good feedback that doesn't can't necessarily impact Gears Five. No, like, do you know no. what I mean? Like, like, so, like some of the stuff that, like, it, and I think this is the big thing. As I look at like every day, you know, I get lots and lots of good feedback around the game, and some of it is like, like I'm gonna use. The blood, not, like I'm gonna use the like the uh, the omen, yeah, uh, as 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 an example. You know, I understand that people are like, I want the old omen, but like, and that's fine feedback. But we're not gonna move back to the old omen. Like that's just not something that's gonna happen. So, and I think there's part of that is you know there's like thank you for your feedback, but you know, like that doesn't that that ship has sailed. The decision has been made on that, mm -hmm. to where you know don't expect it's gonna change. Rightly or wrongly, it's just you know, the dev resources that have been committed to it are are there, yeah. and kind of it is it is you know kind of it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, on the other side of it, you know, we right or wrong, we made a commitment at the beginning around tiles and what we believed tiles could do to the game, and and such, and um, the the impact of our commitment to tiles was felt in us not being able to go and make as many multiplayer maps as 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 as, as, yeah, as what people wanted right and and, be, and it was a trade-off that we were like we believed in the future of tiles especially with the map builder and all of these kind of things and then you know we started to realize that a lot of the tile experiences ended up feeling kind of the same which is why we were sort of stuck with those three or four FFA maps for the longest time because 
the gameplay ends up kind of all and en all ended up kind of feeling the same and to go and make ideally when you make a map you want it so that not every even though there's lanes and so on and so forth but you look at the experience of playing on asylum versus the appearance of, you know the experience of playing on Baskar. you know those are be like both like three lane maps largely although uh with 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 a, a like a secondary lane moving through the middle of it mm. but they're very different play styles right so uh they're the same type of a box grid but you know the uh Baskar is a little asymmetric but it's still it, but they're very different um and we, with with tiles we were a little limited by that and we heard from people going we want more maps so you know we believed in the decision that we made when we made it but we also heard the feedback and that was something where we're like okay we're going to stop prioritizing tiles mm -hmm. we're going to start focusing on making our maps yeah you know what it and looks then, like dana you know what it looks like when you played i played 1400 hours of judgment it's quite an achievement yeah. for some <laughs> right it's oh, wow. many hours of the same same map over and over what they messed up with judgment well messed up i mean you can't really say messed up what the design choices were was you have overrun yeah which have their own map design which is really difficult because you're human versus monster right attack defend and then you have the multiplayer and th that was it you know and they had to split their their efforts on both types of ma maps and what you just said is literally the same is you have your commitment to tiles you have your commitment to the regular maps and that's a design choice you guys go with that it works until like you said suddenly you realize it has this it's the same constant feel to it and that's just like with overrun or with uh, judgment is that yeah. you play the map and even though you have all these different lanes it eventually starts feeling same-ish you play at the same pace you play with the same yeah. thing over and over and in my in, when i look at the older games what made them so good was that every map had its real limitations some maps like security had three lanes but because they were cut off with with yeah. lasers you had to make that decision am i going to go through one lane to open another lane or am i just gonna fight it out and duke it out wherever people are oh i think he disappeared he disappeared guys <laughs> give it a minute <laughs> damn it he just poof dana seasons everybody my discord crash <laughs> Uh, Sorry, my just That's all right. That's I, I all right. Heard what like, like judgment lanes, blah blah blah. Yeah, and then I, and then I cried. Oh, then you crashed. Okay, um, I'm watching myself right now. It's very awkward. Very awkward. Yeah. Can you hear me? I I can hear you. I just can't see you yet. Can you hear me? Hold. On. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me. Hello. There we go. Camera. Am I back? Yeah, you're, you're loading it. Okay, you're loading. sorry, I don't know. It literally was just like... No, it was gone. fine, it's so. fine. This is computer stuff. This is what we get into. Um, yeah, it, you know, I just look at the older games and the stuff that I remember, even with Gears 2, the maps, a lot of people competitively didn't really like mm -hmm. them that much, but the way they were set up was... It almost felt perfect that you had to make these critical decisions at the start of your match. You know, you go in, there's three lanes, almost every single map has those. But there is this decision making that cuts you off from the rest of your team. Like Blood Drive, the old Blood Drive, day one, right? It's a lot of like, you make that decision to go to that middle lane and you will be cut off of your team yeah. unless you communicate. And a lot of that in Gears 4 and 5 oh, yeah. doesn't feel that way. It feels like you can always help your team somewhere on the map because it's so open and, and not cut off. And Reclaim, I mean, Reclaim is a good example. It has three levels, but if you're on the highest level, you cannot help people inside the barn. You can't see them. You have to make that decision yeah. what you're going to do. I mean, I think, like, I think to me, I, I don't like Reclaimed, but I, I, I look at the maps that I do like uh, from Gears 4. I think, like, I'm, I'm, I think Dam is an excellent map. I think Harbor is an excellent map because I think it, it, it talks a little bit about what you were referring to. Um, um, I think uh you, you know and even uh, like and even in um in gears like like i think baskar is tons of fun to play in gears 5. um i will be curious to see our philosophy around maps has changed that you're gonna 
kind of with our new ones that are coming out. So I'll be very curious to see what you think around that. Okay, well. We'll, and we'll, I can't say anything more no, right of now. Course. I will just say that. Of course. <laughs> but I will just say there, there was like, there's like, like there was a, a like a, a a philosophical difference that you will see different from like Pahanu and Reactor mm -hmm. into um, the the ones going forward. Yeah. Well, good. I mean, I, we're always willing to try. We I play Judgment. I mean, that's just a badge of shame, but it is what it is. Um, then I take it you gotta get I going. Wanna, I, I, I do want to. I, I actually I do want to just address the one thing that um, Neff said in chat about the omen. About okay. she's like, but if you know that the majority of people hate the change, uh, why wouldn't you take steps to either fix or compromise to get to a place where most people are happy? So I, I I understand that. So first of all, there is a vocal group of people that aren't happy with it, but I don't know if it's the majority of people. Um, secondly, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like this was a decision a design decision that was made um to kind of for the game that came out uh we did adjust it so that it wasn't so um intrusive uh, vis vi yeah visually restrictive yeah. um so we did dial down we did dial down the opacity and stuff like that but beyond that like because it was so embedded into so many features of the game that even if right now like it's it's it's, it's not something that we would go and make a change to um inside of that context mm. and you know and that's you know rightly or wrongly or whatever it is that's kind of where we are because of it has to impact you know for when you get buffed inside of uh, escape or horde or if you're getting frozen or whatever it is there's a couple of things as part of that it was the design thinking um again we can argue whether you like it or you're not and Clearly, you're not a fan of it, and, and, and I and I understand why. Um, at the same time, you know there are times when design decisions are made, and they just those are the design decisions that are made. Yeah. And it's 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 it, and you know, are we learning? Are we growing? Are we progressing from there? You know, that becomes now we can have those as a different conversation. But just I and and that's kind of what I wanted to flag. Like this isn't something where you know we're doing it despite people or if changes aren't happening it's because we're like we're like we're we're you know we're deliberately like well fuck you guys it, it a lot of times it's like well no that was a design decision yeah, it's we have too to much do. work probably you know you, you know we're committing to it like you know the eliminations is a good example right like i think you know rightly you can you can say you wish there was not just eliminations but that you know at this point my understanding is that's a one that you know we're that's something that we're committed to that is just it's baked into a lot of aspects of the game um, regardless of, you know, again, you may not like it, you may like it, whatever it is, but it is, it's, it's something yeah, that's that, just, to, to us, I guess I can speak for the people in the chat to us. It was more like a, like you said, it's baked into the game, but it showed at that point, a certain thing that we were like, how could you not see the, the faults with this? Right? Because it had to be changed. The opacity. I think most people use the simple omen, um, because it's less intrusive and less restrictive. Uh, but it, it was a huge thing of people when the game launched that said, I, I simply don't like the way this is. And that that's fundamental. We can understand, we can deal with that. But many people just say, no, I'm not doing this. If Call of Duty launched like that, they would probably say the same thing. I mean, every game would probably say the same thing. It's just, we want to see what's going on. I understand the design choices around being frozen, being buffed, etc. I still think there could have been probably a different, a different approach to that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and that's that's like, just that's, something. You know, uh, talk to Ryan. Yeah, like, that's like that doesn't make it much. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean that maybe that's for the next game. Who knows? Maybe later on. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but for us as a community, I think a lot of people. Yeah. In my community, I mean, anyway, they they sort like, of it's... subside. Yeah. You no, know, looking through this, and you know, we're gonna wrap up minutes here, but. but uh... uh oh. Oh, he's back. Okay. Oh, it's <laughs> my Discord or your Discord. <laughs> okay, no worries. You're back. Okay. Um, no, it's, it's 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 you know, it's like it's like the idea of the same situation, the blood spray. People are like, I don't like the blood sprays, but then we do a, a, a to vote for the blood spray. The blood spray was literally like 
what piece of content do you guys want? And then we gave it to you for free. So I don't think in that scenario, we're literally going like, hey, they're in the Connection's a bit bad game. right now. Whether you're not, you're like, <clears throat> yeah. What? No, no, you're back. You're back. No. It, it yeah, yeah, I'm back. But like that, that, yeah, like that, I mean, some of this, like, it becomes sort of two kind of conversations. And I'm not trying to be condescending, but it's like there are design decisions that were made that are, are part of this game that are part of this game. Yeah. And, you know, we, you know, we can't, like, it, it like, going back and saying well a year ago or two years ago when the game was being designed or two and a half years ago mm -hmm. you know we have to kind of look at it and go like okay we made a commitment towards doing x and and it's baked into so many aspects of the game that it's not just as something as simple as like let's just do this and you know that becomes a bit of a tricky thing because like let's just say we were like let's just say Dutchie, you're a huge fan of blood sprays and you want them all and you've spent a bunch of money on them and you think they're the best thing in the world. And we go and say, hey, you know what? Some people don't like them, so we're actually going to turn them off inside of the game. And then you're like, well, thanks, Coalition. I've spent all this money and you guys have just screwed me, right? So it's not like, and, and that's a very simple explanation. And I'm not saying it's money based. I'm just saying this is consumer focused around the idea of what are experiences that lots of people want to have. Right. And I think that becomes tricky. And this is sort of the game is designed in a certain way. And we believed in those designs. And, you know, what may come in the future is I, I, I'm not going to speak to. But, I, no, I, you know, I do think we have to understand there's a little bit of a design decision inside of that. Well, let, let me just finish on this then. I think almost everyone in my chat that I've seen before and I've seen in the Gears chats as well. And me as a streamer being able to read all that in an instant. I'm just kidding. Um a lot of us are such fans of the game that we can bullshit anyone into playing the game. But we can also bullshit anybody <laughs> from quitting the game because we're also really good at yeah. detracting people, like I said, just for me and yeah. my own friends, but also random people. I mean, the Gears community is very harsh on newcomers in the versus crowd anyway, uh, because we mm -hmm. have high expectations. That's just what people are like. We expect you to be able to wall bounce out the womb which is never going to happen. It took me several years to, you know, even do it remotely blind, I suppose. But now with the way the game works, it's extremely difficult to get into. So that's my, you know, advice to you. And I guess to your team is to mm -hmm. try to appease us more, I guess, so that we can attract more people into appeasing even more people, which is obviously, you know, my own bias, of course. Uh, but your advice to us as a community, what would that be? If you had to summarize, what oh. what would you say is so helpful that you never see that is super unique, I guess? And yeah, I don't know. For all your experience combined, <laughs> all your experience. No, 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 no. Like, no. Yeah, no one's ever asked me that question before. I have to think about it for a second. I mean, first of all, like, I. I Gears is hard, right? Like Gears, I think the reason why people love Gears, there is no other game like it. Like it is the way the movement works. It is the perfect combination of Mortal Kombat meets Call of Duty. You know what I mean? Like it's a, it's a movement game. It's a fighting game. It's a shooting game. Mm -hmm. So there are kind of those, and there aren't a lot of games where movement, like obviously every shooter movement is important, but movement is like a, a, a fighting tactic inside of gears not just a I'm, I'm strafing or whatever it is right like it is a it is core to the experience so and i think that in itself is you know and this is why like you look at it you know when you see professional gamers like cod players like i'm gonna go and take up gears and these are guys that are like literally the best players in in, in a shooter in the world and they pick up gears and they struggle with it yeah and you know but then you see someone like mental who is one of the best gears players ever and he's able to go and move over to cod yeah. and be successful that, no, but that's mental is, that's our yeah. that's our culture in gears is no matter you yeah. play co-op or versus it 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 forces you with that blunt force of try again yeah. and again like dark souls sorta uh but then with people <laughs> people who are the monsters <laughs> Um, that once you get into it, it's very hard to let go because you just want to continue playing. Yeah. And, and that's the magic yeah. of it. But 
us as a community where you know if we don't get to kill something in the game we're killing each other that's what people do yeah. that is literally uh, sort of ingrained in us i suppose and when yeah. i one I game that i want you guys to look at and like please take inspiration from this is from doom one to doom eternal is to jump from okay. those two games because the way they do the gore in that the way they do well the music is probably not going to be a good thing in gears the way that's going to work because uh, it's a different pace, of course. But just the um, for anyone that hasn't played the Doom games, please go play them. They're insane games. Uh, it it gives you that feeling of well, hopefully the, hopefully they'll be on game hopefully they'll be on Game Pass soon. I, so. I think so actually. <laughs> I think Doom One's uh, the the first yeah. remade Doom is, but it's just yeah, it's that vibe that keeps people interested. Even like I'm not a Doom multiplayer yeah. guy. But if the game plays and feels like that, that's what keeps you hooked. And like you mentioned with Gears, why it's so unique is, um, mm -hmm. it, is that game. Is, it's that perfect combination, but it needs to flow. It needs to, everything needs to fit. And right now it feels like you yeah. guys are definitely, from what I feel with the campaign and with Escape, it's there. You guys can do this. Technically, I'm sure the developers are there, the support's there. For, for Microsoft, luckily, right? Not every company has that either. Uh, but it's just that connection. Like we've, I, I feel like we're all just swimming in, in shark infested waters and none of us know how to swim together. You know, we're like, oh, I don't need your help. Yeah. I can do this alone. That's what it comes across for many of us. Yeah. By well, many, right? It's, I agree. It's now, yeah. Small now, community. to answer your question about what can the community do? Right. I... So, a long time ago, Apple wasn't successful. Cool. <laughs> but the people that were fans of Apple were out there, and it was like a brotherhood. It was like, if you knew, you knew. And I feel like with Gears, because of the uniqueness of Gears, and I understand your guys' frustration about you know certain things because of the balance of the legacy with the new and so on and so forth, but like community i would like uh, like the idea of gears fam gets thrown around and i think it's there but i would like to see the community be a little bit more for the community a little bit more and 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 like welcoming and encouraging and tolerating and building people up and all of that kind of stuff because because gears is special it is unique it is it is it, it like like i was just talking about it it, it is something different and and I'm not saying you need to go out there and say it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, but it, it, it I do feel like people need to be a little bit more like building each other up rather than tearing each other down. That's what, I mean, I like to see that in humanity anyways. Like I look at sort of the animosity that's going outside in, 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 in culture in general, and it makes me sad and it makes me frustrated. Um, but like, if you've got people that are playing gears and like, yeah, you know what? Like, you get someone on your team that maybe isn't as good as you want them to be. Like I was playing a while ago and like right when the game first came out and I was playing and I was not doing very well. And I had this guy like sending me messages that was like, why are you here? Get out yeah. and all of that kind of stuff. And it, you know, it makes me laugh. And I'm like, but like, you know, I get it's frustrating the moment because you want to be successful. But at the same time, going and making a person to feel like shit is not gonna is not the solution. <laughs> no, but that kind of comes back to what I mentioned. With with the older games, yeah. Gears One, Two, and Three, people were so invested with just playing the game, they didn't even think of like, oh, the guy's crap. I'm gonna send him a message. People started doing that when the the feel of the game to them was not, yeah, I don't know, hooking enough to say I'm just gonna keep playing, because you're right. I've been that way in the past, long ago. Luckily, I've grown grown out of it, but now it's it's amplified. Now Xbox Live allows that to be much easier. You know, people can stay anonymous yeah. while well before you couldn't really do that that well. You had to, you know, be in a, the music just starts kicking in. <laughs> um, people had to speak in game chat in in order to play rank, for example. So you were kind of forced. You couldn't hide from one another. You know, so even if you felt like someone was crap, they could hear you right away and defend themselves. And that kind of weeds out the the weak, I suppose, 
and builds up people who want to be there who want to say like yeah i know i'm crap but at least i'm here i have someone yeah, yeah. rafo he's 40 something i'm not gonna say his real age but his comment was over all these years he's never been you know master level at gears or whatever like some of us are um but his enjoyment is that he at the plate of gears or at the plate at the table of gears players where everyone is a master with a plate and a, a knife and a fork right he at least now has a um um a plate so he can sit at the table because he's good enough just to be at the table and that's many people yeah. want to play for that they don't they want to play to prove the other guy even if they're in their team wrong and that's very yeah. uh, i guess investing to people because just like in the fighting game community once you're good at it you don't want to quit you just keep playing casually yeah. professionally well, and, whatever yeah and like i said and i know that like in general toxicity is has increased and i think that's something that microsoft cares about and you know we're looking at getting better mm. at how do you mitigate that and i just think to me is like you know the gears community comparatively speaking to like you know call of duty or fortnite or you know the bigger like the big big games in the world yeah you know we have you know we have the luxury of this we can be a community we can be a group of people that are there for each other mm. that can be like it's kind of like you know what you're dutch you're you know you're, you're like when you're we have like five people when in you're this in, country playing no but when like <laughs> when you're traveling and you go and you meet someone who's dutch from and wherever they are and you're there and you're going to pick them up actually i'm going to give a different a better example when at the esports events when the euros would come over mm. as much as i like i you know i know those guys and you know like they would trash talk each other and they would always be down on each other but when they were at the events the euros were always watching the other euros matches and they were always cheering for those guys and they were like you know what like even though we may disagree when we're playing against each other like in our in our neck of the woods yeah but when we're in mexico or when we're in san diego we are the euros and we're there to kind of watch each other and support each other and help each other mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff and like i would love to see you know like the community of gears players be that like you know what like fuck all y'all gears is the best and you don't know what you're missing like if you don't want to play this game if you don't like you need to like like we're in a we're an exclusive club that is full of badass gamers and and that's what i would love to see and i would love to see people taking that and building each other up a little bit more so there you go you guys know what to do you uh i know it's i know it's i know it yeah i mean excellent. i know it's like maybe this is a pipe dream on my part but th like that's like that to me i think this is the this is where this is the advantage that i think gears has yeah, I mean, I see yeah, it with other games too. It, it, it's but it's it's two way street. That's the end end of the thing. You know, it it has to motivate hey, us you know what? to want to do that. And we're I know trying. they're out there. I, mean, I know, I know you're trying. But I'm just I saying will, that's that's. I will say, I mean, like from where Gears Five began to where Gears Five is now, um, you know, we're never. I mean, the, a lot of the game is where the game is, and we're changing the best we can in areas that we can, and you know. The support won't go on forever, but we're doing like, <laughs> no, but course. like you know, while we have it, we're doing the we're doing what we can, and we're getting people excited, and we're we're, we're you know we're listening, and we are showing, and we're making changes. Yeah, but it's the it's been much possible. faster. Yeah. Everybody, I mean, you gotta be blind to ignore that one. You know, the changes have been coming faster. There's more transparency, etc. But it's obviously you know holding that right, keeping that going, and that's also for our community is very hard to do when for you know two updates in a row people will be like okay i'm coming back and i'm playing and then after a while they go back to their old ways to stay consistent mm -hmm. like that again from the old games to new what i noticed in the old games i've had it too where private games went on all day long people of every skill level would come together and teach each other how to play and stuff that is very much not there anymore I've tried doing that personally. Is that is that is that, in, is that in any game though? And I and I and I honestly don't know. Like I'm like that's me asking. Uh, like not trying to. 
deflect from gears i don't know i think what what really dam damaged gears was that uh you know it took a long time between gears 3 judgment and ultimate edition to come out and it's funny because during ultimate edition when that was launched it had a momentum of people coming together teaching each other once again and then that steam elitism came out again and it's like back to the old ways of if you're crap you don't want to play this game you know um you're not gonna have a good time so that's what okay. I remember. I think we can still go back. I think there's still thousands of people out there that are waiting, dormant, right? Waiting for that opportunity yeah. to come back in. <clears throat> Maybe see Gears Tactics and say like, holy shit, make this like, make Gears 6 like this and that's it. You know, you got it basically. But yeah, yeah. motivating people yeah, to mean, speak out like that way yeah, is, is I mean, hard. Like some of this is like like the long haul and some of this is for the of short course, and Of course, of course. We have to balance that out, right? But so. the, one of the reasons I wanted to invite oh. you to this is to encourage you guys that yeah. despite what everybody might say, you know, you don't have a choice but to learn, <laughs> right? You you make all you can make all the mistakes in the book, but once you get it right, then you get it right. And then you can stick to staying to the right yeah. thing. And when I read people saying like you guys should burn down the studio and stuff. Sometimes that's a heat of a moment thing, but I, many times I read that over and over from the same sort of people. And I think like, do you understand what you're asking for here? Like this is people's jobs, right? This is their livelihoods. You cannot expect people to listen to you if you act like that. Like it's never gonna happen, no matter who you are. Uh, well thought out professional, uh, um comments are always better yeah hello yeah yeah no, I, was, I was just listening okay sorry i thought it was more <laughs> my screen just went blank for a second uh, that's okay. yeah no like literally my screen is like black right now so um on that note i do have to go of course of course this has been fun dana thank you very much um uh oh, thank you uh thank you guys for stopping by and supporting dutchy and i appreciate your comments and questions dutchy chat um, Who's that? <laughs> now I'm playing. <laughs> I changed my name, remember? So no one knows me Nacho anymore. Nitus, Dutch, thank sorry. you. You're actually the first okay. one to actually pronounce it right. Most people, they can't read, apparently. But hey, that's our community. <laughs> anyway. I'm assuming, it's, I'm assuming it's a reference to Leonidas. Correct. Yes. See, back there. there you you see, yes, yes. He's correct. See, guys? He reads. He reads. That's impressive, so. right? Let's be honest. But now nah, I'm playing. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you, Dana. So, um, yeah, well, thank you guys. And, uh, thanks Dutch. And, you know, uh, I, 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 um, you know, I, I, I appreciate you guys all playing and, um, and, you know, like I said, I, I know there's passion and I appreciate the passion. There we go. Yo guys, give that man some fists. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, f I, won't, I won't say that, but we'll wave him goodbye <laughs> for today. Uh, I hope you're off in the weekend. You have a good weekend. Of course, stay safe with all the shit going on. And uh, yeah, maybe yeah. we'll see you on here another time. Yeah, I would love to. Awesome. All right, man. Well, thank all you. Right. Thank you. Later, dude. Okay. okay, everybody. Let me switch back here. Right, there's no camera because <laughs> I'm stupid. <laughs>